I call this meeting to order. So we'll call the roll. Weaver? Here. Flood? Vote? Here. 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 And I understand we have a guest to the invocation tonight. There she is. We got uh, Tiffany Nagel Monroe all the way from St. Paul's. Right. Long distance. Yeah. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you abundant thanks for this day that you have made. And Lord, we give you thanks for this community. For all who seek to serve and lead in it, from citizens to those elected. God, we ask your blessings and your protection over all of us gathered here and those who aren't with us in this space. We ask for your provisions during this unusual time of pandemic. We especially lift up today our superintendent of schools, all of our educators, teachers and administrators, and our students. Lord God, they need your protection and your strength and your grace and mercy in the days that follow. Be also with our parents and with all of those in our community, seen and unseen, who just are in need of a little extra you. God, we thank you for this meeting, and we thank you for all that you have already given us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, join me in the flag salute. Attention, position, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first up, as always, we've got citizen uh, participation, uh, three minute limit, uh, 12 minute limit per, per subject. So if you would, come forward, uh, sign in for us, let us know who you are. And then I wrote it up, so hopefully I can keep within my three minutes, not you go. be too problematic. All right, my name is Deborah Waterman. And in light of the rush nature of last county council meeting, or, uh, city council meeting, I've taken this interim time to craft a more thoughtful response to the mask mandate. And I thank you in advance for considering my perspective with an open mind. To mask or not to mask? That's the question many of us are asking ourselves as we go about our days in various public spaces. Does this store require masks? Sure, there's a sign, but will they enforce it? Will you be accosted by some mask shaming Karen? Even for those of us with legitimate medical exemptions, the sense of others' negative perceptions can be real, especially if you live in a mask mandated city. Certainly no normal person wants to give anyone else a sickness, much less coronavirus. Nevertheless, a significant percentage of people believe this latest precaution is a bridge too far and infringes on our rights to make our own personal health choices. We hear, I wear my mask to protect you and you wear your mask to protect me, proclaimed across the media and social sources. This battle cry has become an assault on those of us without masks, used against us as if their position makes them somehow morally superior to those of us who don't wear masks. I've always contended that the individual's choice on whether or not to wear a mask should not be ridiculed. But many folks don't take that position. Indeed, there's now a Facebook page dedicated solely to informing on businesses and customers in Shawnee who have not masked up. There's little to no consideration for those who might be disabled, and there are many misunderstandings over the actual guidance of the mandate. This is continually being abused and creating more dissension and a dangerous situation for many of the population, as well as affecting the livelihoods of local businesses from both sides of the perspective. You proclaimed you wanted unity in our city but your mandate has done quite the opposite. Let's abandon any sort of absolute certainty about the scientific efficacy of mask wearing. The maskers can show scientific studies to prove their side, and I can show others to bolster mine. For example, do you know the CDC says the disease spreads mainly among people who are in close contact within about six feet for a prolonged period of time? That's why we initially banned large gatherings. It also probably why it didn't keep spreading significantly, even though people were crowding maskless inside grocery and home improvement stores. Where was the feared spike then? In other words, the evidence suggests you typically won't get coronavirus from simply passing someone in a store aisle. It takes close contact with an infected person for several minutes to get infected yourself. The New England Journal of Medicine reports, we know that wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little if any protection from infection. Public health authorities define a significant exposure to COVID as face-to-face -face contact within six feet with a patient with symptomatic COVID 
that is sustained for at least of a few to up to 30 minutes. The chance of catching COVID from a passing interruption in a public space is therefore minimal. In many cases, the desire for widespread masking is a reflexive reaction to anxiety over pandemic. The journal also wrote, it is also clear that masks serve symbolic roles. Although such reactions may not be strictly logical, we are all subject to fear and anxiety, especially during times of crisis. One might argue that fear and anxiety are better countered with data and education. Did you hear that? Fear and anxiety are better countered with data and education than mask wearing. But by your decision to pass a mask ordinance, you excuse your responsibility as our leaders to educate the public to enable them to make the best choices for themselves. It's you essentially, okay, I have like two lines here. Okay. You essentially defaulted to the exhausted parents proclamation of because I said so with an expectation that that would be the end of the conversation. Well, it's not the end. While this specific battle may not be won, we people will continue to fight to make our voices heard. Thank you for your attention and consideration. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Hello. Hi. I just my handouts. I'm not sure how that works. Do I just give them and they go around or? No? Okay. If my you name is. Sign in, please, if you Sorry? haven't. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Julie Ackerman. I'm a lot owner on the school land side of the Sh um, Shawnee Twin Lakes Number One, uh, located at 31950 Lake Road. Sorry if I'm nervous. I'm very nervous, you guys. I know my voice is shaking. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about the no, no wake buoys and the no ski buoys located on the west end of the lake. First and foremost, the Shawnee Twin Lakes are the city's water supply, so it's the goal of everybody to protect that water supply. With regard to the no ski buoys that were located at the Patterson Road Bridge that is underneath the water, right at where Patterson Road ends there, those were removed approximately several weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, and they were moved further west. So now there's nothing there to notify skiers or boaters that there's a possible hazard underneath the water. I would like to see the city reconsider their decision to move those buoys, place them back where they were so the general public is protected and the city of Shawnee is conceivably protected from any liability should an accident or something occur at that location. With regard to the no wake buoys located further west on the lake, those have been removed and my understanding is they will not be replaced. In 1994, when the city opened, voted to open the lake number one to recreation, the lake ranger, Glenn Collins at the time and city staff evaluated and approved where those buoys would be placed. The no wake buoys were purchased by individual leaseholders and approved and enforced by Glenn Collins, the, the uh, authority in charge of the lake at the time. So I've talked to 90% of the leaseholders and lot owners out there. The vast majority would like to see the no wake buoys replaced. There are some who do not want any no wake buoys and there are some who are neutral. Of the vast majority that want the no wake buoys, their sole concern was soil erosion, the lakeshore erosion. So lake shore erosion leads to sedimentation in the water and it leads to a smaller water pool. I spoke with a representative of the CLO and I'm gonna tell you what he said, which I, which I hope that we will all agree to. He said that it's the goal of everybody to preserve the water, the, the water supply, to protect recreation and to protect the shoreline. I hope that the city of Shawnee is open to discussions on those no wake buoys to come to a good compromise for everybody out there to meet all three of those things. Thank you all very much, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Diane Rudabach and I too uh, am a lake owner uh, along with my husband Rich. We've been out at the lake for 20 years and it's a great place to be. Um, my concern really have two concerns, uh, one safety and one the soil erosion as well. I am a nurse and uh, also a faculty, retired faculty, 
And in teaching health and wellness, we really focused on prevention. And that's what I hope that we can do. I really am concerned about the erosion and I have pictures. So we, in 2016, uh, we did have surveys at the lake and there's a survey pin and that survey pin, there's a white post in the picture and then also a survey pin on the first page. You can see that that survey pin is now 12 inches or one full foot above the land. At the time the survey pin was placed in that land, it was even with the dirt. And also it was in full dirt. And you can also see from these pictures and the measurements that the survey pin now is almost six feet from the edge of that bank. And that's where the soil has eroded. If you look on the second page, these are pictures on the east side. And all these tree roots were all underground. And now you can see that they're exposed. And you see all those rocks. My husband and I did some research. And we found out that one simple way for us to stop some erosion was for rocks or pebbles until something else could be done. So I think it's really important that we really consider what's causing the soil erosion. Uh, part of it is, is uh, we do have a lot more people on the lake. There are a lot more waves on the lake. Uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of activity and I love the activity and it's great, but I think we can find a way that we can have both activity uh, and also protect our land. So I too am in favor of uh, replacing the buoys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Good afternoon. My name is Henry Davis. And I'm also here about the buoys at the Shawnee Twin Lake. I live at, uh, my lake lot is 31704 Lake Road. And my property is right there. It goes down there to a point. That's the north spot out there. And that's where the buoys is. And I can't, my grandkids or kids or nobody can even go out there swimming on weekends because them boats come up through there and, and y'all took the buoys up, or somebody did, and there's, the waves is like two foot high, them big old boats, and it washed the kids come out of the water. It's unreal. And the people lives on up in that cold. They got people up there in, in paddle boats and floaters and, and paddle boats and all this. They, they, can't, they can't go out there. The skiers whooped them out. I don't understand why the Shawnee Lake, Shawnee Twin Lake people does that to us. That's more like a residential area up there. And I went over a Friday night at the boat dock. I stayed over there, I talked to some boats coming out. I asked them about how you go about getting a permit to put a boat in here. Five of them told me, we didn't know you had to have a permit. And there's, there's two of them told me that they had a permit, and one of them told me that, that you had to get on online. And I went over Sunday, and I hung around about all day, no Saturday, I'm sorry. And there were two police officers sitting up on the hill. One was looking east, and one was looking west. And I was over there, and I pulled up to talk to them. One of them was named Nichols, and I don't remember the other guy's name. And I asked them, if y'all checking any boats today? And Nichols said, yeah, we checked three today. How about them apples? How come the, how come the city of Shawnee ain't out there checking them boats and making them pay? They come from everywhere since they found out that they don't have to pay. It's unreal. You people ain't never been out there, most of you, to really spend any time. I've been out there 31 years. I know Mr. Glenn Collins really, really well. And if he'd been out there, this wouldn't have happened. I don't know if y'all ever know Mr. Glenn Collins or not. There's one does. There's nothing, there's nothing. But you couldn't beat that fellow. He was super fine. 
Well, that's about all I got to say, I guess. Thank Ms. you all. Mr. Davis, if you would please sign in for us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Well, not seeing any, we will we will move on. So we get to the second uh, point here, which will be the uh, consent agenda. Um, anybody? Want to uh, remove anything from the consent agenda? Not seeing anybody. Anyone? I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. agenda. I'll second. All righty. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's call the question. Okay, question passes 5 0. Thank you very much. And now we're down to uh, animal control present pet of the week. Looks like we have a, a dog this week. Hello. I'm Officer Spoon with Shawnee Animal Welfare. And this is Melody. She's, um, oh, she oversees the volunteers. Um, she's been doing a lot of great things out at the shelter. This here is Kobe. He's going to be our pet of the week, and we have had Kobe since December. Wow. Do you guys have any questions, questions? for us? I saw the other day you guys had asked for, like, volunteers. Yes. Did, did, you, did you get enough? Or? We're working on it. Working really on hard. it. Okay, so if anyone would like to volunteer, yes, there's still absolutely. that opportunity. Yes. Okay, very good. And I'm guessing the dog's available for adoption, huh? Absolutely. Right. What's the fee to adopt a dog? It's um, five dollars is our adoption fee. Five dollars. Very good. Looks like a nice little dog. He's he's very shy. <laughs> yeah. He's just now breaking out of his shell, so we've been working with him for so a couple about, weeks. So about how old do you think he is? He's about two to three. About two to three. Yeah. He probably makes someone a nice nice dog. What yeah. Kind of dog is he? he is a rat terrier. All right. So All right, thank, you. thank you guys very much. Okay, next up we have a mayor's proclamation. So I guess I'm going to come down there and do that. you introduce yourself okay. and tell these folks what you guys do. Okay. Uh, I'm Tiffany Walker. I'm the care case manager with the Central Oklahoma Healthy Start Initiative. We are umbrellaed under the Community Health Centers of Oklahoma. We're located at 130 North Broadway. My name is Terry Smith and I'm the community liaison for Community Health Centers of Oklahoma. We do have seven locations and we're located in four different counties. Uh, we do offer services for infants, we have our behavioral health, we have medical, dental, and we serve the insured, the uninsured, and the underinsured, and we work on a sliding scale. And you guys are just right across the street? We do have a location right across the street. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't aware that you guys were even there until, I don't know, a year or so back. but. Um, what, what we're doing is uh, we have a, a mayor's proclamation for National Health Center Week, and I better put my eyeballs on or I'm not going to be able to read it. <laughs> Whereas Community Health Centers of Oklahoma, Community Health, a community-based 501c3 private nonprofit incorporated May 10, 1971, opened its doors in 1973, 
And whereas Community Health is a federally qualified health center that provides comprehensive primary medical and dental care, family support services, accessible preventive care, behavioral health, discounted pharmaceuticals, and has six health centers in four counties, Oklahoma, Logan, Lincoln, and Potawatomi, and has provided free health care to the homeless for over 30 years at their Healing Hands Health Care Services location, as well as reaching out to homeless sites including Positive Tomorrows, Jordan Crossing, Salvation Army, West Town, Passageway, and City Rescue Mission. And whereas Community Health mission is to provide comprehensive, accessible, and affordable health care that is of the highest quality, and its vision is a healthy community free of health disparities. In, in 2019, Community Health served 15,000 patients, with 2,237 of these being persons that are homeless, 46% of the total uninsured, generating 40,562 patient encounters, and whereas Community Health has been a viable part of Shawnee since opening its doors to the Community Health Shawnee Family Medical Center in January of 2014, providing primary health care services and behavioral health to those with or without insurance on a sliding scale fee based on income. In 2019, Community Health Central Oklahoma Healthy Start Initiative, a program to redu reduce infant mortality and prenatal health disparities, expanded to Potawatomi County and is located at the current clinic site, 130 North Broadway, Suite 300, Shawnee, Oklahoma, 74801. And whereas in August each year is recognized as National Health Center Week, a week-long celebration that affirms the health center's commitment to the communities. During the week, community health honors frontline providers, staff, stakeholders, children, and beloved parents patients. This is an opportunity to unite and educate all citizens about the risk factors, importance of early detection and treatment. Now therefore, I, Ed Bolt, Mayor of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, do hereby proclaim the week of August 9 through 15, 2020 as National Health Center Week. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for Absolutely. Thank, Thank you guys you. very much. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh. Turn around a little bit These papers. You got us? You break the camera. Good job, Jeff. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, I'd like to introduce Frank Crawford uh, with Crawford & Associates. Crawford & Associates has worked with the city for years to help us with our annual uh, financial reporting package that, that coincides with our uh, audit. Uh, the information that is in the performator is a, is a way for you all to look at the financial performance of the city in a way that's a lot easier to understand than, than having to go through all 100 plus pages of the CAFR. They've, they've done that to help uh, put together some ratios and things and, and Frank will help explain what, what they're trying to do and, and come up with a composite score for the city but uh, uh, I'll, I'll let him without further ado <laughs> explain what the that funny performer award really means. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you Chance. Welcome. Thank you Mayor uh, and City Commission. Uh, my name is Frank Crawford. I'm president of Crawford & Associates. As Chance had said we've uh, been helping the city over a number of years put together their annual financial statement reporting which if you haven't read it is about 128 pages of unreadable um, information. Uh, I've learned over my years as an accountant, the one thing that non-accountants don't like is a page with rows and rows of numbers in columns and columns and columns uh, without any kind of interpretation of what that means. And so 
about 20 years ago, we created this thing called the Performator, which is only about 25 pages or so of, of data. And what it was designed to do was basically answer a question that had been posed to me for a number of years by a, a city councilman, not unlike yourselves, from a very small town in Oklahoma, where I had been the auditor for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. And every year I would go to the council to explain the audit, and he would ask me the same question every year, and I would forget. And so I would have to answer it just off the top of my head. And the question was, I don't understand anything in this audit, but I do ask you one question every year, and that is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are we doing? And I thought it was just such a simple, basic question that why couldn't I just answer it? Of course, I answered it thinking, what did I tell them last year? So that way, if I told them the same score, then there wouldn't be any other for questions, uh, except I missed it by a digit. So I said, well, you're about a, 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 a 6. And he said, well, last year in my notes, it says we were a 7. So why did we go down? And then begins a tap dance of having to try to explain n uh, accounting terms in a non-accounting way. And so after I left that meeting, I decided that we would, we would make this analytical. And we developed a methodology that, uh, unfortunately for us, was just meant to be for small town Oklahoma and ended up being taught now in college and university textbooks as a, the method to analyze basically the health and success of a government. Uh, and so it's used across the U.S. It's used by 11 international governments. It's used by the U.S. Department of Interior. And as I said, it's ta taught in college and university textbooks. So basically what we've done is we've applied that theory to the last several years of Shawnee's financial statements, basically so we can answer that question. If we were to be asked on a scale of 1 to 10, which is technically 0 to 10, how are we doing? With 10 being representative of excellent financial health and success, and a zero being representative of poor financial health and success. Everybody seems to understand the scale of one to 10. And so that's what we've basically done. And a couple of caveats before we get into the numbers, and I won't spend a ton of time on this, but the first caveat is that there isn't any way a government can score a 10 on this. It's just impossible. That government does not exist. It would have to be a literally a tax-free, debt-free, brand new infrastructure, no tax entity, which there aren't any of those. The, you also can't score a zero, although the government of Puerto Rico is testing my zero, um, if you've been watching in the news. And so uh, if you'll flip to page five, I'll kind of explain the overall, uh, I'm sorry, uh, page five, I'll explain the overall score to you. And then basically those scores are backed up by us looking at about 17 to 18 different ratios that mean something in the government. Um, and again, it's kind of coffee table reading. It basically has very few words and very few numbers, unlike the audit, which is very small and has lots of numbers and lots of words. This seems to make a little bit more sense. So if you look at page five, we can kind of go back, let's say five years, and track what that score had done. And notice that over the last, uh, uh, and again, we're talking as of the period of June 30, 19. I know we've just had June 30, 20, but the CAFR and the audit has not occurred for that. that that'll be occurring in the next several months. So we're still talking about a period that would have began July of 18 and ended June of 19. But you can kind of see if you go back to 2015 or so, uh, we were up in the eights, upper sevens and eights, uh, 2014, 2015 and then began about a three-year decline where all of the financial ratios were kind of in the negative. We were spending our reserves. We were bringing in less money than we were spending. We were using up our savings accounts and our, our carry forwards. And then we were using that money to basically just pay operations. We weren't reinvesting it in infrastructure. And so the score had dropped, uh, if you can see, from 2015 to 2018 from an eight to a four a 4.8, which is a pretty significant drop. Uh, I think if uh, when uh, Chance came in and kind of realized in the middle of this drop what was going on, has made uh, several changes over the years, and as you can see for the year ending 19, jumped that score back up to a 7.1. Um, that's probably about average of what I'm seeing in the Oklahoma governments. Most of the governments are scoring somewhere in the low to mid sevens. Um, but again, this is as of 19, and we all know that 20 was a very strange year, at least so far, uh, and, and into this calendar year that we're in now. So the 7.1, I can actually break down into three separate subcomponents, because I told you that this is kind of a picture of 
not only your health, a snapshot of the health, but it's also a snapshot of performance and a third snapshot of sustainability or what we call capability. And so I kind of measure each one of those. And so the best score uh, in the year was the financial performance. We scored a 9.6. You could probably score a 10 on some of these groups of ratios. You just can't score a 10 overall. You came very close to scoring a 10 just on performance. That means of the six or seven financial performance ratios that follow these pages, you are scoring extremely well. So you performed during fiscal year 19 financially at a near perfect or a near excellent uh, a score. Now, the lowest score is our position. Position means health. And so basically we've had two or three years where the health and the performance were not very good. And so it's gonna take two or three years of very good performance to pull you out of that hole. And so right now we're sitting at a 3.9 uh, it was a two, I believe, uh, if you were to look at last year's. In fact, I believe um, after every set of ratios, there is a summary ratio, um, uh, for example, on page 15, where you can actually see over the last five years all of the ratios and their individual score and see that, yes, our, our health in 18 was a two, but because we performed so well in 19, it has raised that two to a 3.9. Now, a 3.9 isn't anything you want to, you know, get a gold medal for. Um, five on our scale is about average, about satisfactory, but you don't want to be around a five. You need to be above a five. And so uh, health-wise, uh, we are climbing back out of that little bit of a hole that we had dug over the past two or three years prior to 19. Uh, but it's going to take uh, two or three years of a seven, eight, nine performance to kind of dig us out of that. Capability wise, uh, you score very well also. Um, you score a 7.5, which means that you have the ability to sustain the level of services that you're providing without draining your resources. Uh, you still have avenues to where you can borrow money. Um, you have absolutely zero general obligation debt, which of course means that you can only issue that debt if the general public votes to issue it. However, if the public votes for it, they also basically improve, approve a tax on themselves via the property tax scheme, uh, uh, property taxes, which will basically then be levied just enough to pay that debt. You have no geo debt, therefore you have almost zero property taxes. You do pay a couple of judgments, I believe. so you have about a $2 per capita levy right now, which is not very much at all. So you have that avenue to explore if you wish to improve infrastructure. Uh, you did just recently add a half penny sales tax and you can actually see that on one of the slides where you can measure how the sales tax looked compared to prior years uh, now that we're getting a half cent more. Uh, three and a half cents is your total. Um, that's about satisfactory or average. You know, once you get up in the four range, you're kind of capping yourselves because not a lot of larger communities will have a higher than 4% rate. But your capability, your sustainability is, is valid. It's a 7.5 and that number doesn't usually change very much from year to year. It's usually the health and performance that changes. And those are the things that you're in control of. And so this last year, June 30, 19, uh, was a good year and we'll now measure June 30, 20 uh, here in about two or three months once the audit is complete. And we'll just keep tracking this. We'll just keep adding years until we have a good 10 years of data that we can kind of watch and track. And then that way you'll have the ability to explain to somebody, well, look, from a financial standpoint, we're a 7.1 and that's better than where we were at a 4.8 the year before. So it'll just continue to roll. What it doesn't do a very good job of measuring is how happy everybody is. <laughs> You're not gonna see quality of life. You're not gonna see a lot of performance related issues. This is really just a financial barometer, a, a financial performator, a, uh, a barometer of financial performance. We actually had to make up the word. There was no such word. And yes, it does get mispronounced all the time. Perfometer, uh, we, we hear it all. So, but that's the, that's the concept. So it's been a while since we've had a chance to visit with you about this. I think I came probably five or six years ago and, and talked to the previous council uh, about the prior five year scores. But what we'll do is we'll try to make this an annual thing where just come and kind of update you and then let you ask me. Well, we were a 7-1 last year, now we're a 6 or now we're an 8. So what changed? And we'll actually be able to point to the individual slides that would, that would show you how that data is calculated. So that's it, unless you want me to go 
into more and uh, I'll answer any questions that you might have and let you guys get a chance to read this. Uh, I think you have it both electronically now and several print copies uh, that are uh, bound also. Nope. I really appreciate all your work on this. This is really good. I think Chance, we were going to have him up like in April or something, and <laughs> I all, actually think we, this, we, uh, we were going to try February yeah, initially, February, and then that's right. I knew that was yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that was a, that yeah. was a whole world ago. Um, yeah, absolutely. things have certainly yeah. changed since February. So. Well, we, so anyway, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to update much sooner um, than july or august right. of next year when we get to 2020 we'll probably be talking again maybe january ish about what 2020 looked like so Sounds this will good. still be relatively fresh by then hopefully yeah well i appreciate you coming uh, absolutely out. thank you all thank, thank you, you. Right, you i think this also reflects the the work that you guys have done the last couple of years mm -hmm. i mean yeah. and we yeah. really appreciate that we really do and i know everyone here in shawnee does you got us in a lot better position than we have been in a while so thank you very much. All righty. Uh, let's see. Discussion and consideration of resolution updating city fee schedule by one setting water rates for residential and commercial use, both inside and outside city limits pursuant to subsections A and B, section 26-26, article two, chapter 26 of the city code and two setting sanitary sewer rates for residential and commercial use both inside and outside city limits pursuant to subsections B and C sections 26 and 27 article 2 chapter 26 of the code the city of Shawnee and I believe Ashley is up yes I am okay so as an outline in the resolution that was passed in December of 2018 every year we look at the change in the CPI for all urban consumers for water and sewer and trash collection services for US municipalities and we are adjusting our water and sewer rates based on that percentage the percentage change from January 1st to December 31st of 2019 was 2.21% and that change here is reflected um, it actually in real money terms it comes out to a very small amount so even taking into account the meter maintenance fee so this is just for water and sewer this does not include sanitation which will be later on mm -hmm. it's forty two dollars and seventy six cents to forty three dollars and fifty seven cents so an eighty one cent change off the minimum bill okay. um, and this will be effective October 1st 2020 and um, that is, I'm happy to ask any questions, or ask any questions, answer any questions you guys may have. Do we, do we know about how this will impact the average bill? Yeah, so the assuming it'll be 2.21% of the minimum bill, it will be in total for water and sewer, not right. including the change in sanitation right. of about 81 cents. About 81 cents. Per month. Okay. And I think years ago, maybe there had been like a number of years where this hadn't been done, and then we kind of yes. get you know a bigger bump, and now we're going to do it every year. So yes. it's a smaller. So there's no large increase, increase yeah. which is less of a shock on the system. Yes, easier to absorb. Yeah. Anybody got any questions for Ashley? You said it was going to be effective October one. Why did we choose right now? to discuss it and start the businesses and individuals mm -hmm. have been through a lot in the last mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. So and, that and them having to face the thought of my water bill is going to mm -hmm. go up again. And I realize we did vote to mm -hmm. raise it small amounts each year. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wonder why right now. Yeah, so the good news is, is we did do an on-ramp, so technically the resolution was supposed to allow it to go into effect, sorry, I'm struggling with my mask, um, March 1st, and so we were able to delay it to October 1st. Okay. Um, obviously, there will be budgetary impacts if we decide to delay it farther than wow. October 1st. If that's something the commission would like to look at, we can always look at that and run the numbers on the budgetary impact just from the finance side. Um, 
it was the good news is is by doing it year by year it is little by little so there won't be as much impact most like i said most places the minimum bill will only go up 81 cents per month so we're talking a very small change in regard to the water portion this is not i'm not talking about the sanitation portion what is our water delinquency rate now oh that i cannot tell you lisa do you happen to know uh we can get that information to you okay so we did delay it seven months correct the math is right in my head mm -hmm. seven months yes we delayed it seven months um and so we figured that because we're going we have to raise sanitation rates later which will be the next mm -hmm. um thing that i present to the commission and so we figured it'd be best just to do it all at once it's less multiple changes for the consumers we change it both for both things get it done and it's less shop for them so they don't have to go through multiple rate changes with setting bill pay all of that okay. gentlemen any other questions All right. So, yes. Oh, we're going to do our motion now, aren't we? Entertain uh, a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll motion it. I'll accept it. All righty. We had talked about this a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mark, it's second by Bob. Um, all righty. So, Joe, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The resolution updating the city fee schedule by one setting the water rates for residential and commercial use both inside and outside the city limits pursuant to subsections a and b section 26 26 article 2 chapter 26 of the city code and two setting the sanitary sewer rates for residential and commercial use both inside and outside the city limits pursuant to subsections b and c section 26 27 article 2 chapter 26 of the code of the city of shawnee very good, so let's call the question. Like, uh, passes 5-0. Thank you very much. I think, Ashley, you're not going far, are you? So discussion yeah, and consideration of resolution updating the city fee schedule by setting monthly rates and fees for solid waste services pursuant to subsections A, section 23 to 38, article two, chapter 23 of the city code and providing for the readoption of city fee schedule in hall. There you go. All right. So this is the sanitation um, increase that I was talking about with the previous item. So when we signed a contract with Central Disposal, it was approved by the commission in June. There was also an MOU approved that allowed a delay in the rate increase that is in that contract mm -hmm. that starts October 1st. So we are looking to increase our sanitation rates also on October 1st. So at this moment, a large poly cart, it cost a consumer $17 and 89 cents. It would now be increased to $20 and 84 cents with a small poly cart. It will be 14. It was $14 and 39 cents and it will become $16 and 34 cents. To kind of wrap that into the water um, increase, at the minimum rate, someone who lived inside the city and were paying the minimum rate for water and had a large poly cart, they would, go, they would be paying $64.41, which is an increase of $3.76 per month. And this also starts on October 1st. So if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Questions? Do you know how long so they, it been since? I guess they increased central disposal went up. Correct. Fifteen percent or what? Um, so there was multiple, and I have my bid sheet, I believe, and that will tell me, and I can tell you exactly. Yes. So e there was not a so the direct cost to the city for the large poly cart um, increased two dollars and eighty cents. Um, from 1520 to 18 and then for the small poly cart a dollar and 80 cents and what we chose to do with the trash rates this year was to we just passed it on flat to the consumer um, whatever the flat increase to the city was it went on to the consumer and we did not include any sort of admin fee or anything in the increase 
we are literally are just looking to break even on these cost Makes increases. Sense, the done a really good job. Mm -hmm. And I think my, my understanding has been a little while since that rate. Yes, up. the last increase was last year of a dollar, and that's because we basically weren't making enough to mm -hmm. cover the cost. Right. And before that, I think it had been 2010. So it has really? been a while. Wow. Okay. Obviously, none of us like paying more for, for stuff. So very good. Any other questions, comments? I think for Ashley. Very good. Okay. Seeing none, then we'll entertain a motion. I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we got a motion in the seconds. Um, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A resolution updating the city fee schedule by setting the monthly rates and fees for solid waste services pursuant to subsections A, section 2338, article 2, chapter 23 of the city code and providing for the re-adoption of the city fee schedule in whole. All right, let's call the question. Okay, motion passes 5-0. All righty, discussion, whoops, pardon me, discussion and consideration of an ordinance amending portions of chapter 28, wells, oil, and gas of the Shawnee City Code of Ordinances by amending chapter 28 to ensure all provisions are in compliance with relevant state law and administrative agency regulations, providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for emergency clause. So Ashley, you're still with us. Well, yes, you're stuck with me for there a long go. time Glad tonight. Glad to see you. <laughs> um, so this is just some minor changes to bring us into compliance with state law and OCC rules. Um, this. Um, section has kind of bounced around from department to department um, for um, in the city and so finance has decided to kind of take it up and help make sure and get it back on its feet and so we are just doing some little there we're not changing any fees we're doing very minor things the largest things is if you want to drill a well you have to have the application submitted 60 days prior to start versus 20 this is just to give the Commission and the oil and gas inspector Time to get everything in proper order. Um, also, it allows the city to use the entity's bond or letter of credit to plug a well if they abandon the well and do not uh, take care of the necessary finishing touches for right. lack of a better term. Right. Um, but we currently have around 40 active wells. It kind of fluctuates, mm -hmm. um, but we are working with engineering to make sure that we have everything in the proper place and then we plan on going forward like normal so okay. and jill could you go ahead and come up this way in case you have any questions jill has actually been the one spearheading this in the finance department so if you have really specific questions she's going to be the one that's really able to help hi and so we're happy to answer any questions you may have anybody have any questions since she's walked all the way up here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here for nothing. So this is just some housekeeping, basically, it Base, sounds like. Basically, uh, more just um, record keeping and um, just improving our system. Okay. That's me up now. No other questions? So I guess we'll entertain a, a motion. Move to approve. Yeah, Darren. I'll take it. All right, we got a motion and a second, and Joe's up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance amending portions of Chapter 28, Wells, Oil and Gas of the Shawnee City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 28 to ensure that all provisions are in compliance with relevant state law and administrative agency regulations, providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for emergency clause. Very good. All righty, let's call the question. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. We need to call the question for emergency clause. Oh, okay. So we need a motion for that. So moved. So Bob. Second. And Darren. Now we can call the question. Thank you. All right. 
Item 9, consideration of uh, budget amendment for Fund 001, General Fund. The City of Shawnee received a donation of uh, justice grant to cover certain COVID-19 supplies needed by the police department. I bet we see Ashley again. Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is just a budget amendment. We received a grant from the Department of Justice to cover some um, COVID-related expenses, and this was not included in the original budget, so this is including it. But I'm happy to ask, answer any questions that you might have. What, what sorts of things are we, are we buying? So I actually have a list. So it's going to cover some overtime, some face shields, um, it's covering a generate, a couple generators, or sorry, one generator, um, some salt and other things, some N95 masks, hand sanitizer, um, <laughs> air mask mounted, P-A-P-R. If you want any like really detailed information about this, I'm sure that Mason would be happy to explain <laughs> what all of the stuff detailed means. Um, and uh, decon shower, um, and hospital grade biohazard bags and other like just supplies like that. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Entertain a motion. I'll do that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you, sir. So we have a motion. I'll say. All righty, so let's uh, call the question. Looks like motion passes 5 0. We're to new business. Any, no, new business. no new business. Very good. Commissioner's comments? I think we'll start with you tonight, Bob. I don't have anything tonight. Uh, Mr. Rutherford? No, sir. Neither do I. We have a quiet bunch. Mr. Seahorn? Uh, you know, really, just the city's position improving is a huge plus. Glad Absolutely. to see that. And the uh, reporting that they do is is really first notch. I mean, it really. It, and Absolutely. then this that the consulting group did is really good. I mean, it's easy to to look through it and kind of mm -hmm. see what's going on, make a little bit more out of it. So appreciate that. Yep. Nothing. Yep. Okay, back to me. Um, I want to echo what Mark had to say. I mean, this is definitely a lot easier for me to read than a big stack of Excel spreadsheets. But um, so thank you for you guys uh, getting that done. And also thank you for all the work that is clearly reflected in here that we're in so much better position than we were just a couple of years ago. That's a lot of hard work. And with your diligence, we were a lot better than, than we were just a short period of time ago. Also, there was a number of folks, and they've, they've left, unfortunately, it talked about the lake, but I know we've been out there looking at that situation, and, and that's being looked into, so, you know, I, I trust that we'll, we'll do the right thing, so that is, uh, that's all I have. So now we're going to recess, uh, let's see, to the, where are we going to now? We're going, are we going to executive Air, session? Airport. airport. Let's go to the airport. I didn't see Bonnie tonight. Let me find it in here. All righty. So uh, consider approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. And Bob. All righty. Let's call the question. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, any new business? Any new business? So we are adjourned and we go to the municipal authority. Um, again, consider approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mark. Darren. All right. Let's uh, let's vote. Motion passes five zero. Any new business? Now we are adjourned, so we go back to executive session. Okay. Yep, executive session. So consider uh, an executive session to discuss evaluations of the city manager and city treasurer pursuant to 25OS 307B1. 
discussing employment, hiring, appointment, demotion, mm -hmm. disciplining, or resignation of any individual salaried public officer or employee. I move for executive session. Second. Darren and Bob, so let's call the question. And motion passes 5-0, so we will go down the hallway and we will be back. So we reconvene into uh, city commission meeting. So uh, consider matters discussed in executive session regarding discussions of Annual evaluations of city manager and city treasurer pursuant to 25 OS 307 B1, discussing the employment, hiring, employment, hiring, appointment, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of any individual salaried or salaried public officer or employee. So, need a you want a motion? Motion, yes, sir. I move to delegate the city treasurer evaluation to the city manager, authorize the mayor to prepare and circulate city manager evaluation form and consolidate the data for performance review at our next meeting. A second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. So we will call the question. Um, yes. <laughs> I didn't write all that. Didn't all that down. Oh, yeah. He's got bullet that. points. Okay, motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. Okay. Number 14, conduct interviews of city commissioner ward 1 applicants. And then we're gonna we're gonna call everybody up individually, and I think you've got them arranged in uh, alphabetical order, in the order, in trying to be fair about everything. So we will um, call them up, and then um, my understanding is we're gonna give them a period of time. Did yeah. we decide on three minutes or what? Three minutes is fine. Yeah. Three yeah. three minutes sure. to uh, to kind of state your case, and and then we uh, will have some uh, questions. I think we'll have them stay up, and that right, and then yes, and then uh, ask questions and. And go from there so uh, we will start with and first of all I want, I want to appreciate everybody that, that applied uh, for this um, a lot of times you know there's not a lot of interest sadly but we we had a we had a, a large group and I really appreciate people uh, being interested enough to to put yourself out there and uh, it's not a, it's not an easy thing so we, we really appreciate that so we'll start with mr. Rex Hennon Good evening. Uh, I would just add a few things from uh, what I uh, attached to the, uh, the letter with my, from, of my application. Uh, I just want to let you know that my motivation for seeking the seat is to hopefully give back to the city and its citizens in a positive manner. As an employee, I was treated very well throughout my entire career, though at times I was not liked by some due to having to tell them no for different reasons. Uh, my family and I love Shawnee, and we want what is best for all of its citizens, uh, including those with various, various disabilities. To that end, I would encourage the commission to explore the possibility of forming a disabilities council to provide input to the commission uh, regarding the impact of uh, projects, policies, and services the commission may be considering. And I would imagine that to have members that would include representatives of South Central Industries, Phase 7, uh, the veterans, senior citizens, and others. Uh, outside of that, another possibility would be to encourage persons with disabilities, disabilities to apply and become members of existing advisory boards. Uh, while many people are born with intellectual and developmental disabilities, everyone is just one car accident, slip on the ice, stroke or other event away from having a disability yourself. So uh, in my opinion, it's a disservice to make wholesale decisions for an entire community without input from those most affected by those decisions. So that's kind of, I'm off that soapbox. 
And that's all I really have other than what I had with the application. Okay, we, we have a list of questions and if you guys don't care, I'll just, I'll, I'll just read the questions um, to Mr. Hannon and the others as they come up. Um, Mr. Hannon, how do, how do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? Well, having worked for the city and been involved with commissions over 31 years, I'm pretty familiar with how the process works and to be honest where the bodies are buried. But uh, uh, I just feel that my experience in working with, uh, with other commissions and with uh, other city departments and staff uh, will give me some some good insight and hopefully help to uh, help move the city forward. Okay, thank you. Um, how would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution? I would listen to what they have to say, and I would not. Uh, every problem, no matter how small, is a problem to that person, mm -hmm. and they deserve the the time to be heard. And uh, I would also not promise them something that I couldn't. Okay, thank you. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? I'm the first one up here. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody might have a different opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, I think in spite of the division that I've seen over the years, it's the people and, and their willingness to come together. Uh, that would be the main thing. Um, three of them. Um, I think uh, the energy that is being brought forth by maybe younger people that are getting more involved is a good thing. Uh, but at the same time that there are the older generation that have the institutional knowledge that can help to balance that and still keep moving forward, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, does your interest in serving on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on city commission and why is serving on city commission important to you? Uh, I think that what I read there at the beginning mm -hmm. kind of outlined that. I, I feel that, uh, People with disabilities, are, this is personal to us because we have a daughter with Down syndrome and inclusion is, is vital for everybody. And uh, just wanna make sure that everyone has that opportunity to be heard in the community. Because we do make decisions that affect everyone and if, if they don't have that kind of input, we may be missing something that would be very helpful to them. Okay, very good, thank you. If you could make any improvement to the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? Unity. Okay. All righty, thank you. Are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they may be somewhat difficult? And then please explain. Okay, I'm sorry. Please explain. Or um, I can read the whole thing again if you know. No, like. that, that's okay. not, I, I didn't hear the last part. Okay. Uh, yes, I would. And in fact, I've had to do this with our, I'm on our church board and we had to, had the same discussion, discussions regarding the mask issue. And to be honest with you, I was, I was on the other side, but mm -hmm. when it all came down to it, I felt like unity in that decision was very important and I voted with them to do that. So. Okay. But I would definitely give my opinion on it. There you go. I've got one. It's a comment more than a question. It's just an observation. I've counted and your 31 years experience is more than double the experience of us commissioners. <laughs> oh, that, 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 yeah. So I thought that was really a, it, it brings a lot of experience as far as your, your background. Oh, thank you. Anybody got anything else? No, I have a question. I'll okay. ask each of the applicants. Um, there's a lot of reading involved being a city commissioner. And unfortunately, most of that occurs on Saturday and Sunday because the agenda is posted on Friday, trying to prepare for the Monday night meeting. Are you willing to do all of the reading that's necessary where you'll be well informed 
Monday night. Yes, sir. Anybody got anything else? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you, you uh, stepping up. Uh, let's see. Next, we have Mr. Randy Cam. How are you, Randy? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. So, you have three minutes. Thank you. To uh, state your case and. So I, I saw the notice on the website that there was an open city council position and that it was by uh, an interview process as opposed to election because it was filling your seat. Mr. Yes, Mayor. sir. Um, and I, I felt a calling to apply for that simply because in my four years that I've lived here in Shawnee, I have really grown to love this community. Uh, we've moved my in-laws up from Texas and uh, they love it too. And it is our wish and desire to continue a long and fruitful uh, life here in this community. And if there is a way I can take that uh, position as a commissioner and help enhance what Shawnee can provide to others as they come into this community, that would be my big goal. Um, I see a lot of great opportunities. I see uh, an amazing future ahead for the community as we see the turnpike construction 10 miles to the west. Mm -hmm. I think that that opens the doors for quite a bit of economic development in the community. Um, that is very essential to the infrastructure to the community itself. Uh, it also gives us a, an opportunity to uh, provide more services, provide more opportunities for our, our citizens and the community at, at large. Uh, Shawnee is a, about th what 33,000 people. We have you know, a lot of smaller communities that come here to shop. So I want to find ways to entice those folks to come here for, for their uh, uh, needs in that regard. I, my job in this community, I run the uh, clinics for SSM Health Medical Group. Um, we are actually building a new location right. just um, north of 45th Street. I'm super excited to be uh, in charge of that project because it is building something that's going to further serve our community from a health care perspective. We'll have women's health services, primary care, urgent care, dermatology, physical therapy at that location. It opens up the doors and, and actually creates better access for our patients at that location as opposed to everybody uh, being at the one location over by the hospital. In my tenure there, uh, in four years, I've brought on approximately 15 new physicians and providers. Uh, which are integral to the health of the community. And uh, I would say that all of those folks want to be here long term and want to see this community thrive and be successful. And I feel an obligation to them to help that process if I can as a commissioner. Okay. Um, I love the community. I'm a hard worker and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to listen to every citizen, to make sure that their voice, voice is heard, uh, to honor them and to do the very best I can to make sure that this community grows and, and sees its potential as, as much as possible. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'll go through the same questions, sure. and I think Commissioner Salter will have a question for you also. <laughs> um, how do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? So in, in my job currently, I have 328 employees and 60 physicians and uh, nurse practitioners and PAs. Um, I manage 92 budgets in that, and that is not a small task. Uh, we, we do over $100 million worth of gross charges at our facility, so we have a lot of business. Uh, that is my responsibility. I have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure our budget is, is uh, intact. Uh, that has been an exceptional challenge this year with COVID-19 and the pandemic. Uh, and, you know, it, it's... While I get a lot of grace from my organization, it bothers me greatly because I know if you're not financially sound, you can't provide the best care. You can't provide the best services. And so uh, that is something I really strive to make sure that we, we do a good job with at our hospital and our clinics. And I would like to you know, make sure that we're doing that from a city perspective as well. I think it's important that you, know, you stay within budget, that you, you manage your finances and you, you do any growth is incremental and measured so it's not to the point where it's going to stress your budget to the point you know where you don't have pay uh excuse me i say patients all the time <laughs> um you don't have citizens that are going to struggle as a result of that sure okay thank you very much mm -hmm. how would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution i actually do that every day right now and you know you had the mask mandate just a little bit ago we've required that at our facility since april um, it is a little bit of a struggle, but I'm empathetic. I, I want to make sure that people understand that what we're trying to do is, is for their best. 
and I try to communicate that with them. I want to give them the why, and that is important to me as a, a leader and would be as a commissioner to make sure that the citizens of the community understand the why of why we're doing what we're doing. Why were the decisions made the way they were? Because there is always a lot more to the story than just typically what gets put out there, or, or, and it sometimes makes it to where people can understand you know, the, the process more and be a little more uh, compliant. Okay, very good. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? I think Shawnee has amazing people. That's first and foremost. We have been so blessed to be here. We, we moved here from Edmond four years ago, and I can't say enough about the friendliness and, and uh, just the compassion of the people in the community. Um, I, I think that the community as itself is, is seated and ready to grow. Um, I think that based on where it is, the infrastructure that is moving this way with the turnpike, uh, there's opportunity for business, there's opportunity for better education, there's, better, uh, or there's opportunities for, for major growth uh, neighborhoods, uh, revitalization of older neighborhoods. Uh, those are the th important things to me. Okay, very good. Uh, does your interest in serving on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the city commission? And why is serving on the commission important to you? I think I can encapsulate most of that in the comment I made before, and I, I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. the community. Uh, in the time I've been here, I've fallen in love with it. We love the people. We love the businesses. We love the, the, the events that Shawnee puts on, uh, the, the different things that they do uh, to, to support you know, community renewal, community, uh, the Blue Zones project. Those types of mm -hmm. things have always meant, you know, it means that you care about your citizenship, you care about the folks here, and you want them to live healthy, active lives as long as they can and that is you know as a healthcare worker that's what i do in in my role as well try to make sure we have all the resources to provide that um, we love shawnee because of the people we love shawnee because the, the businesses here i think that there's potential for growth but i also know that the the company you know you've got little businesses like uh, hamburger king and different things like that that are staples my in-laws couldn't wait to move back here and go to hamburger king because they went there in the 50s when they were dating and That's so great. you know making sure that we have those institutions that still continue uh and and provide that nostalgia for folks i think that's important as well thank you very much mm -hmm. if you can make any improvement to the city of shawnee what would that improvement be well um i feel like i'm kind of doing that right now with the uh, additional health care facility that we're building there on uh, on harrison uh, we need more infrastructure uh, as the community grows we need to have the ability to take care of its its patients and its citizenship uh, by having services that are convenient and easy to get to. Um, my goal is, is a little more health focused simply because that's where my mind is most of the time. But uh, I, I really think that uh, if we can grow those services and provide those better, it's once again, just another lure to bring in businesses and people as the, as the community grows. Okay, very good, thank you. Are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public even though they may be somewhat difficult and please explain uh, absolutely um, like I said I do that uh, with my business as it is right now um, we have lots of opportunity with uh, people that come in dissatisfied or they want changes uh, once again give them the why and help them understand why we're doing what we're doing and how that benefits them and uh, that's something I think I do fairly well and I think I can e expand on that with uh, a seat on the Commission Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Salter, I know you have a question. Well, I am well aware that you're used to doing a lot of reading and uh, budgets and all, so are you prepared to do a lot more reading and probably give up your weekend? Yes, sir, not a problem. I, I, we have lots of regulations in healthcare and I have to keep up with all those things. This is not a big deal to me. It's just part of the, part of the, part of the gig. Gentlemen, anybody else got a question? No, seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. All righty. We are to Mr. Tony Kenyon. Come on up, Tony. Mr. Are Mayor, uh, members of the commission, my name is Tony Kenyon, and I want to uh, present myself today for uh, uh, the appointment to the open chair that you vacated recently for the commission of ward one my family and i moved to ward one uh into ward one area about four years ago when i left the active duty military 
Uh, as I understand, you have my application there in front of you, I think, and you can see that my experience is extensively military. Uh, and during my tenure in the military, a lot of my responsibilities included uh, implementation, development, and enforcement of policy and procedures and regulations uh, to number just a few. Uh, it's, it's hard to button all that into 20 years of military service, but I will say that my military service began shortly after college. Um, I decided it was a great idea to go into the military and pay for college, and I was in boot camp and uh, over at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia on September 2001. So my uh, ideas for my future uh, changed vastly that month, and my military career uh, stretched into a 20-year tenure that I had not initially intended. So uh, what it gave me was a heart for service, and now that my, uh, I'm in the twilight year of my military service, I want to continue my service to the country by focusing on the communities of Shawnee. Uh, my uh, wife and I, of uh, 11 years, we have three young children that are in Shawnee's public schools, and it's a focus of mine, and a, I feel compelled uh, to take up the mantle uh, that uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor Ed Bolt vacated, because as we say in the military, uh, trust is a good thing, uh, but control is better. So. Uh, with my family being there, we've decided to put our roots down here in Shawnee. Uh, that's what I would like to do is, is take, take the helm of uh, Ward 1 and uh, plug myself into the community there uh, and uh, just really get involved with the goings on here in Shawnee with uh, our, obviously our growth and the, uh, be a part of the um, opportunities for business and, and those things. So. Uh, Really, that's, that, that sums it up there, pending your questions. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with those, but thank you very much, Tony. Sure. Um, how do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? Well, I, I know that there's a, a lot of new faces here and that uh, the commission and the managers are, are kind of new to their posts. And I believe that uh, rather than any kind of weakness, I think that's a strength that you have. And what I bring to the table, I'm, what I lack in municipal experience I bring with me the things that I think that our founding fathers actually brought with them when they came here. They had no experience on how to start a government. Uh, and what they did was started the uh, finest country in, in the, uh, the history of the world was born. And they had no idea how to develop a republic based on democracy. And they did it without former uh, you know, experience and that type of thing. And I think that what, uh, what got them through that was that they were men of integrity, they were men of intellect, and they were men of, uh, they had strong moral compass and they had a vision for the future that involved a better quality of life for themselves and their citizens. And that's what I'm gonna bring to the, company, to the table here mm -hmm. for you. Uh, you know, so um, I know that experience is a good thing, but um, with, uh, with those, those four things in, in mind and as a guide, I think that I would be a key part of your team here. Okay, thank you very much. How would you do with citizen conflict and resolution? Well, I've had to deal with, as you can imagine, being in the military as long as I have quite a few conflicts, um, some of them minor, some of them quite serious. And uh, as, a, as a, a leader, I've always uh, tried to express to each party the views and the uh, ideas of the person that they're in conflict with and, and try to get them on a, a, a similar footing. There always seems to be middle ground in every conflict and when you can get individuals and people on that ground. In the end, I found that most people usually have the same goal in mind, uh, and, and, we, and getting there, they may have a disagreements on how to get there, but if you can bring them together uh, and find that common ground, normally the conflict will resolve itself. Okay, very good. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? Well, to echo my predecessors, the people of Shawnee are absolutely the, the number one strength here in Shawnee. I think that uh, Shawnee has that small town. We were a little big town, so we, we still preserve that small town feel that that we've had in Oklahoma for so long. Yet we're able to grow, and and our you know commerce uh, here that's pushing out towards I-40 and all that. Even though we've got all those things coming in and these new businesses and things, and we're growing, we still seem to have that small town uh, feel where uh, you know I recognize you and and, and say. Hey, how you doing on the street? And and we still have that uh, familiarity with each other. And people in Shawnee are uh, 
still willing to talk to each other and, and they're very friendly folks. So uh, that would definitely be uh, my top one. Uh, two, I think our public school system is actually one of our strengths. Mm -hmm. We have excellent teachers here. We have excellent staff, our principals and our uh, superintendent work very hard for our children here in Shawnee. And I would definitely like to see um, more support f uh, for, those, for those folks that work in that field. I think that's a strength that we have. And then uh, our, for our third strength, I think that our police department is actually a very good, uh, I'd say they put on a good, uh, good front for Shawnee of the, I guess I'd say uh, put their best foot forward for Shawnee is the police department because a lot of times uh, the only people that the citizens get to interact with on, on occasion mm -hmm. are the police officers. And they don't get to come in and meet the mayor, they don't get to meet the commissioners, uh, but they do meet the, the police officers more often and, and our police officers are great folks Mm -hmm. They're very friendly and cordial, and uh, you know, I just I've seen uh, I've seen a few of them de-escalate some situations that it just it just amazed me. They they did such a great job. They've tr they've been trained well, and they do their jobs very well. So I would say that our three strengths are our people, our schools, and our police department. Okay, very good. Thank you. Does your interest in serving in on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the city commission? And why is serving on, serving on the commission important to you? Well, as far as being a, uh, for any, any personal uh, reasons for serving on the board, like I stated before, uh, we've decided after several years moving around the military that Shawnee is the place we want to be. My grandmother lived here. They moved in, the, my grandparents moved here in the 80s, and my uh, parents moved here in the uh, early 90s. I graduated from Shawnee in 1996. Mm -hmm. Then I left and went to school and then joined the military and I've been gone for a while. So I kind of have a, a unique perspective out of everyone here. I think that I, I got to see Shawnee as Shawnee was 20, 30 years ago. And now I'm coming back and I see the new Shawnee and I, I can see the things that have changed for sure. And I see the things that remain the same. And one of those things that remain the same, like I said, are the people. Uh, so uh, personally, I would like to see that my children and my family uh, have a good quality of life uh, and, and enjoy the good infrastructure that a person th can provide to that that area as a member of the board. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you could make any improvement to the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? I think that there's definitely improvement in Shawnee uh, for our homeless population and our, uh, our um, unfortunately, our drug uh, addiction issues seem to be uh, prevalent here. Uh, I've noticed. Uh, one of the things, like I said, in my perspective from being absent from Shawnee for some time and then coming back is that well, we certainly didn't seem to have the petty crime issue that we do now. Um, in, in Ward 1, it seems that uh, you know, that neighborhood has always been, uh, it seemed like, uh, I wouldn't would say segregated, but it seemed like the neighborhood that nothing other ever bad happens in that neighborhood. And I know there's a lot of neighborhoods in Shawnee, but I'm kind of partial to it because I live there. So, uh, but it, it's gotten to the point where some of the citizens in the area have expressed to me that, you know, in just conversation on the, on the street, because I'm, I'm a front yard problem solver. Uh, and so we, we get together and we talk on the block and it seems that we're starting to have issues with uh, Amazon packages disappearing and right. car doors being checked at night and the motion lights coming on for, you know, in the middle of the night. For, so it seems that there's people out there moving around that have ill intent. And I think that there is room for improvement for those things. Okay, very good, thank you. Are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they may be somewhat difficult? And please explain. Sure. Uh, I've had to make decisions uh, in my military career that quite literally meant life or death for some folks. Um, so coming here on the board, and uh, I think that the decisions you make on the board are no, they have, they carry no less weight because your decisions are going to affect an entire community of folks. Uh, and I think that uh, being a part of that, I'm going to be honored to be a part of those decisions, but the military gives you a very, a very extensive uh, training and experience in identifying uh, issues, breaking those issues apart, uh, finding out what, uh, what individual uh, you know, aspects of, the, of an issue would uh, create a larger issue in, in uh, Problem solving is, is taught to, uh, we, we break it down and put it back together again. I don't know if that's very clear, but it's hard to explain to mm -hmm. somebody that hadn't done it. But uh, yes, problem solving is definitely something we do extensively in the military and my background in that, I think gives me an advantage here actually. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Salter, I think you have a question. Uh, 
apparently with all of your involvement with ARs and interpreting and reading all these years, you would not have a problem doing additional reading and to get up to date on what needs to be done. No, sir. Uh, and and Miss Salter, if you've ever had the, the, the joy of reading an Army regulation, um, <laughs> yeah. I would say that uh, it's, it's definitely bedtime reading because it'll mm -hmm. put you to sleep faster than anything else in the world. Um, I've actually been a part of writing those regulations throughout my career in the military, and I was an English major at OU, so uh, I've done a lot of reading and a lot of writing, and I actually enjoy it. As, as a, I was a bookworm when I was a kid. I still am. Uh, so reading is, uh, is, is something that I actually enjoy to do. I like to break down information and really get into it with, you know, as they get into the weeds, as they say, on, on those types of things. So, yeah, if I can, if I can struggle through, uh, you know, the 670-1 on how to, how to wear the, the new Army uniform uh, all the way down to how to trim your eyebrows, uh, I, th I think I can, I can get through a city ordinance or mm -hmm. some like that. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? Bob, you got anything? You guys good? All right. Thank you, Tony. Gentlemen, thank Appreciate you for the it. opportunity, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, we got Miss Mandy McDonald up next. Come on down. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Great. I'm a teacher, so I use my hands a lot, and I might <laughs> use my teacher voice. That's just a fair warning. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, first of all. Um, I'm Mandy McDonald. I've been in Shawnee for a little bit over a decade. I came because of OBU, and I stayed because of Oh, well, we've all mentioned it and we're going to because of the people. Um, I love this community um, and I knew that I wanted to uh, spend my adulthood here and I have for the past eight years. Um, worked in various schools. I worked at Bethel High School for five years and then I worked at, um, or I currently work at North Rock Creek as an English teacher and a librarian. You can see from my resume that it's primarily education. Um, in fact, there were a couple of things that I realized later I left off because I don't normally have room for anything else other than education. Um, but that is something that's very important to me. Um, I love being a part of students' lives. I think that, I know it's a cliche, but they're our future and they're very important. Um, and I'm proud to have a part in their education here in Shawnee. Um, I've had the opportunity to continue relationships with some of my students and I'm happy to say that they have stayed because they recognize that while they grew up here and they thought it was boring when they were a kid, <laughs> that there are so many opportunities for them in this community. Um, so I hope that as, as this opportunity has been given to me that I can uh, in some way help make this community continue to be a place where our children and our families want to stay here um, and that more children and families come in um, over the, the next few generations. So. Very good. Okay, I'm going to read these questions to you just like I did all the others. Um, how do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? Like I said, um, I work with our youth, again, a cliche, uh, but I, I think that my experience in teaching um, in leading in the various positions that I've had um, at Bethel and North Rock Creek and even with the State Department of Education, I feel like that is a perspective that sometimes we miss. Um, I'm always preaching at my students to use their voices um, and to uh, influence their own communities. And so I think, that, I think that it's important that they see that you can do that now um, when you're you know, a young adult. Um, you don't have to wait to do that. Um, that is something that is attainable and that they should be striving to do. Okay, thank you very much. How would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution? Again, I'm a teacher, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we deal with that uh, pretty often. Um, I'm happy to say, and I may have jinxed myself before the school year has started, I don't have a lot of conflict in my class because as my um, predecessors have said, uh, it's about making sure that people are heard Everyone wants to be heard and they want to know the why. And if they can feel heard and know the why, maybe they're not happy with it, um, but we live to fight another day. So I think that those, obviously adults are a little different sometimes, uh, but I think that those um, strengths in, in dealing with student conflict would help me immensely with that. Okay, thank you very much. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? The people. Um, I remember going back home. Uh, I'm from a small town in Kansas, um, and 
I mean, all the small town ideals you can imagine. And, and people would say, well, why, why do you like Shawnee so much? And I would say it was the people. Um, I chose to come back because I didn't want to lose my church community. I didn't want to lose the friends that I had made over the brief three years of my stay at OBU. Um, so that would be the first one. Um, I think the second one would be perhaps our location. I love that I can go 40 minutes to the city and do big city things, but I love that this community is both small and big, um, and I can come home after my travels and enjoy that, that small community um, living, even though we are kind of a growing and big town now. Um, and then I think that the third thing would be, because of the people and the location, we are a prime opportunity for growth. Um, like, again, they've said, we've got the turnpike, we've got that three-lane highway. We will become a community and have the opportunity to become a community that can grow exponentially over the next few years because of that. So I think those would be the, the three things. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, does your interest in serving on the City Commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the City Commission? And why is serving on the City Commission important to you? I think I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I, I often talk about this in my classroom with my students and in the library with my, my students as we're recommending books and things like that. It's so important that they, they try to influence their community. They've got big ideas, and I want to encourage them to do that. And so I feel like, I feel like it would be hypocritical of me not to take advantage of this uh, opportunity because this is one of the best ways to make your voice heard um, right here in the middle of your community. Um, and so I think that personally that would be something that um, high school Mandy would be very surprised that she's up here. Um, but teacher Mandy, definitely um, this is something that's very important and close to my heart just because, like I said, I encourage my students to share their voice often and uh, I need to do the same. Okay, very good, thank you. If you could make any improvement in, to the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? I think that as we grow, um, part of that growth will come from small, young families like mine. Um, and I think that continuing to make this community um, a safe and welcome and growing place um, for families is very important. My husband and I are expecting our first child um, on Labor Day, and the irony is not lost on us. Um, but I want this to be a place where, I mean, I moved away from my small town, and I don't necessarily want my daughter to move away. I want her to have every opportunity available to her right here at home. If she moves, that's fine, I guess. But I'd like the opportunity to, um, to make this a community and ensure this is a community that she feels prepared for and uh, could settle down in as well. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Um, Let's say, are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they may be somewhat difficult? And please explain. Yes, um, as an educator, again, um, I, I'm certainly not an administrator, so I don't have to take the full brunt of uh, the public's opinion and things like that. Um, but as I've said with the conflict question, um, that's something that I deal with regularly in the classroom um, and as a leader now, um, as a librarian, um, leading teachers. Um, so yes, I know it's difficult and I don't envy, um, I, I don't envy you currently, especially with the mask mandate and everything, um, but I, it, it's something that has to be done. Um, if it's for the betterment of the community, then got to do what you got to do. Okay, very good. I know Commissioner Salter has a question. Uh, as a librarian, you understand <laughs> being <laughs> all the ability to read and, and comprehend. And so I'm assuming you would be willing to read everything that you need to if you're on the commission. Absolutely. I just finished my degree in December, and I was very excited to have free time to not you know, have to read anything. But then I was sad that I didn't have learning and, and opportunities like that thrust upon me. So yes, I, I would very much probably enjoy that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, anybody, anybody else got anything? I do. Okay, Bob. Andy, when I looked at your application, something jumped out at me. 
And in 1974, I purchased my first home, and that's where you live now. So really? I, really? Nice. So I that. And I, nice. I thought, that. nice. We have wood floors now and a storm shelter in the back. They so in, they just weren't finished. It did. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Small world. Uh, it is a small world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed visiting with you. Let's see. Next at bat, Mr. Daniel Matthews. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening, Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity and your careful attention to uh, filling this important vacancy in Ward 1. Uh, I've lived here in Shawnee for 39 of my now 40 years. I started, I grew up in Ward 4. I bought my first house with my wife in Commissioner Salter's Ward in Ward 6, and I now live in Ward 1. Uh, I'm hoping to stay in Ward 1 and not do Ward 2 and 3. We're pretty <laughs> settled where we are. So I feel like we're deeply invested in this community and it's part of that investment that's uh, prompted my desire to fill this seat. Uh, I do feel that my, my last two positions has um, prepared me for this I, as a Vice President of Finance and Operations and now as the CEO and Executive Director of Community Market, uh, familiar with budget auditing and policy writing and implementation and all that goes into that. My introduction to city government and actually what really gave me a passion for this is for the past two and a half years I've been on serving on the Planning Commission where I'm now the chairman of the Planning Commission and have seen all that goes into uh, local government and it's given me a passion for serving in local government. Uh, the, the difficult decisions and the way you have to, uh, you know, put yourself out of the equation. I remember Justin Erickson first told me when the mayor was going to appoint me, hey, don't worry, Planning Commission, you got it, you know, and the very two first meetings were like two of the most controversial things I'd ever seen come across. And I feel that's really uh, prepared me to serve in this role. I also feel that uh, as executive director at Community Market, uh, today I looked in the eyes of 624 people here in our community that need a voice and need to be heard and need to be, uh, know, know how things affect them. And so uh, I, I take that with a great, uh, great uh, amount of uh, sol solemnity in approaching this role. My wife will certainly tell you I'm not a good gardener, uh, but I, the one, one thing I do know about uh, gardening is that soil matters. And I feel that as a commissioner, one of our important things that we do is take care of the soil of Shawnee so that things will grow, so that families can grow and be successful, so that businesses can grow and be successful and provide the opportunities that our citizens so desperately need. Uh, on, honestly, uh, we're raising our four kids here. I really want them to stay here because I want them to have the opportunities uh, that this, this community needs. As we've grown on, you know, you see the, uh, one of the lessons I learned early on was the question of asking, you know, we, make, we want companies to move here and expand. What, what will make that happen? And the economic development models, as, as they've evolved and, and are growing and continuing to change, and we're keeping up with those, in the way that we have uh, more amenities that our city parks uh, available for recreation and making sure that we establish and maintain the things that will attract businesses maintain the soil so that it can grow uh, i'm passionate about this city uh, and i would love to uh, your consideration to fill the ward one vacancy okay thank you daniel um let's we'll do, go through these questions like did the others um how do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of shawnee as a commissioner I believe the two things I've talked about previously, my role as the executive director at Community Market, um, I think I see some issues that maybe sometimes go unnoticed every day. Like I said, the, just today, the 624 people that pass through, all with unique uh, needs, and they desperately need opportunity. They need us to uh, make sure that our city is growing and vibrant, and they, they need that uh, for, the, for bettering their families. The other way, the other way uh, serving on the Planning Commission, I think, uh, I would, it, it's been such an eye-opening experience. I would th think that uh, anyone that has any interest in city government or making our city better, I would encourage them to apply or get involved in the commissions and boards that so often have openings because it's a great opportunity to uh, really invest in that entry point into city government. Uh, it's been a very great experience for me. I think it has prepared me to represent Ward 1 well. Okay, thank you, sir. How would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution? That's something that we deal with every day. Uh, at the market, we see people in trauma uh, going through. And I think uh, you have to listen. You have to be, ex be prepared to explain the policy. Uh, be prepared to have convictions about what you're voting for and the policies that you're implementing. And then at the same time, you have to realize that you know, we're building a city today for the generation of tomorrow. 
and realizing that we're, we're implementing some things with a vision for the future, and that while, but also understanding that every decision you make has an impact uh, on some people, uh, regardless of if you vote yes, if you vote no, if you put a policy in place or not, it's gonna affect people and you listen, you take that into consideration, and in, but in the end, you do what's best uh, for the vision and the, of, of Shawnee uh, going forward. Okay, very good. Um, does your interest in, oh, I'm sorry, what, what do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? I think we're all supposed to say people first, but uh -huh. let me expound on that. I think it's the generosity. Uh, and what I mean by that is being in the nonprofit sector, we rely on the generosity of this community. Mm -hmm. And we see that all the time. Gen people are generous, which tells me one thing. We're willing to come together to solve problems. And uh, I think that's a great strength that this city is interested in solving the problems. So if we can identify problems, bring the city together, I believe that people will move forward to solve those problems first. Second is our, our uh, location as a regional hub. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I have made the commitment. Uh, we spend our money locally. Uh, we believe that the tax dollars matter uh, and we want more opportunity to spend that money locally uh, because that's the way we can grow. We know that uh, we, ser we serve the communities around us and uh, we need to become, we don't need people driving through Shawnee to get to Midwest City. We need people spending their money here and we have that opportunity in front of us uh, to give them more and more chances to do that because with the, with a gen with the tax revenue, we can build the city that we all want. Okay. And then third, third would be, uh, th I, I think it comes down to our uh, opportunity to work with the local tribes and better that relationship. Uh, we're very uniquely positioned uh, between the tribes and Oklahoma Baptist University to have uh, some incredible relationships uh, that would allow us to really grow. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see. Does your interest in serving on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the city commission? And why is serving on the commission important to you? It's important to me because I want to see that every, every person in Shawnee has the opportunity to become all that they can. Uh, I was in a, a meeting that uh, Vitas had, had uh, sponsored and uh, one of the guys said, what if we made sure that every child had the opportunity to become everything that they could? And that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I've always loved politics. Uh, maybe that's a strange vice, some might say. Uh, my plans were always state or national. Um, but when I served on the, was appointed to the Planning Commission, uh, my passion for local politics uh, took off because I said, that's where we can really make the difference in people's lives, is what we do locally to improve the quality of life of the citizens that live around us. Um, and, and that's what has driven my passion to, to uh, apply for this seat. Um, I, I hope that we can create a more inclusive city that gives everybody a chance uh, and uh, provides opportunity for all. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, if you could make any improvement in the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? That, that improvement I think is twofold and I think those of you on the commission have done a lot with, with step one, well both of them, but it's continued improvement relationship with the tribal, tribal entities around us because they're an incredible partner and then giving a, more of a voice and, and more communication uh, with, our, with our largest employers in the area to make sure that we're creating an atmosphere uh, that is easy for them to grow in. Duke, uh, if you, uh, let's see, are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they may be somewhat difficult? And please explain. I am. Uh, from, like I said, from my very first meeting uh, on the Planning Commission, uh, you realize you have to put your personal interest and even personal relationships many times to the side. I've seen many of you do that, uh, and you have to make decisions that are in the best uh, interest of the city and uh, the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, I, I got to play a, a pretty key part, I felt, in the, uh, the new city uh, comprehensive plan. And that, that I was proud of the way we gave everybody a voice in that, but in developing that plan, it, it really did take putting aside personal ideas and, and really coming to consensus. And I feel like I'm a good consensus builder. I feel like in my everyday work, we've, uh, the response we get in building volunteer teams and bringing their voice into the process uh, I think that's, not, that's one skill that I have and uh, look forward to doing it here. Okay, thank you, sir. And I know that's not a big surprise, but uh, Commissioner yeah. Salter has a question for you. Uh, I'm not a librarian. Well, no. <laughs> I also had the responsibility and the privilege of serving on the Planning Commission right. for two terms. Yes. 
and I thought there was a lot of reading there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, city commission has that beat. Right. So are you willing to put in the time to do all the reading if you're selected? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm kind of a uh, policy nerd. And so I love reading and dissecting policy and in my current position uh, between all the grant writing and I actually serve on the National Advisory Council for Feeding America. So looking at hunger policy, uh, there's a lot of reading in, in what we do and I'm, I'm excited for the reading uh, and looking at how it strategically affects Shawnee. So yes, I'm very willing and also very excited for that opportunity. Very good. Gentlemen. Oh. Thank you all. Thank you, Daniel. All righty, let's see who's up now. Mr. Robert Morris, come on down. Good evening. Um, let's see. Well, I'm a 40 year lifelong resident of Shawnee. I've been around here my whole life. I've lived off of Overland Court, I've lived off of Pottinger, I've lived in Northridge. Um, I've known people from all over this town. I've gone to just about every school here minus Horseman because Will Rogers went from third grade to third and fourth grade, so I missed out on one school. Otherwise, I've been in every building in this town. Um, I've known most everyone downtown, for that matter, for the 35 years, give or take, that have been in politics around here. Um, I've served for one particular person, um, as well as Brad Henry in the House and in the Senate, uh, paging for them when I was in high school. I graduated in 98 from here. <clears throat> I have no intention of leaving Shawnee ever. This is my town, I and mean, this is my town. And that's what I want it to be, is my town for, for the rest of my life. And as far as I'm concerned, any more generations that come from me, I want it to be their town too. I want them to want to stay here like I do because I love this town. Uh, what does that have? I guess that's it pretty much for my opening. Okay, very good. Well, we've got the same set of questions for you, so we'll just, we'll just start. How do you believe your experiences will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? Well, a couple things. Um, over, for about 12 years uh, working at Tinker, I was involved in a process called SLEP, which was a service life extension program of the Navy E-6. And part of my job was being in charge of $4 billion worth of aircraft at $250 million a jet. I was in charge of the tail of that aircraft. I ran it. I even designed the process for it myself that Boeing didn't even have a process for. I got to do the tooling. I got to work with the engineers, give them the design specs, let them figure out what they wanted to do and what they could make that would solve my issues. We worked together. I most generally got what I needed because of the uh, class one status of the aircraft. Sometimes I didn't. So we worked, we worked our way around to find out what we could get with the lowest amount of money and the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, what else do I have? I've also been pretty, lately, I've been pretty vocal about things around town. Things that I would like to see improved, things that I would vote to see improved, and things that I would vote against. And voting for or against may not make me friends, it may make me friends. It's fine, either way. I'm still gonna vote what I think is best for the whole of Shawnee, not one specific area. So that's okay. pretty much Thank it. You. Thank you. Um, how would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution? Well, one word I haven't heard yet is mediation. I'd like to mediate between people, see if we can find the common ground to give and take a little bit from each side and come to a consensus of a decision that both, both sides feel like they got something out of it. If that's not possible, then, and it's left to me, then I will make a decision. And unfortunately, as fair as I could possibly be, that will probably still leave someone with a sour stomach and someone jumping for the ceiling in, in glee because mm -hmm. they felt like they got everything. But that comes with the job. Okay, very good, thank you. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? Well, 
I would like to go a little bit further, and I would say the roots of the people, the people that have been around here their whole life, that were that were born here, that went to every school here. I can see several faces in here right now that I've gone to school with since we were little kids, mm -hmm. that I've played at their houses before when we were little kids. I mean, we have the roots that have stayed here, and we don't mind bringing in new plants, if you will, to grow new roots, but the old roots are staying here. That's a very important part. I also think the, the availability of expansion. We have a lot of land around here that can still be used, whether it be neighborhoods, whether it be a commercial area of sorts. I mean, we have, have lots of opportunities to go either way on that and expand, just like we are out on 45th with the new school and in the 45th project and things like that. Uh, oops. The other thing is our location as far as I-40 is one, and that's a given. I mean, that's the, the great highway from coast to coast. But we're also on 177, and 177 has its fair share of traffic too. And that brings people from north and south, so we don't just get east and west. We get all of them. And I think that makes us in a pretty prime spot because we can bring people from everywhere around. Okay, pretty good. Um, does your interest in serving on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the city commission? And why is serving on the commission important to you? I do have an agenda, actually. Uh, and my agenda, number one, is to bring back a voice for the people that don't feel like they have one in Shawnee. Um, in the last election, the numbers that voted versus the total number of people in Shawnee uh, was pretty bad. I would love to see that 10 times that number come out and vote. Doesn't matter if they, it doesn't matter who they vote for, that's their decision. It just matters that they get out and vote. And I want to make sure that they feel like that's an important thing to do again around here. We haven't had that in a long time. Uh, I also think, let's see. Was it? Oh, the other thing I'd like to do, um, and granted this may not garner me any friends with this one, um, I would like to see the wards go back to individual elections. To where if you're in Ward 1, if you're in Ward 6, regardless, your ward gets to pick because that has a lot to do with the people of Shawnee not feeling like they have a voice because over the years it's been kind of one-sided on who gets to pick everything around here and I think if we go back to a single ward election where for in this case say Ward 1 they get to pick Ward 1 nobody else in the town gets to decide that way they truly are the voice for Ward 1 now as a whole they become, you all are the voice for Shawnee. But we need to get back to some of that to get people more involved in this town. Okay, let's see, I think we're down to, if you can make any improvement in the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? One major thing is infrastructure, and infrastructure as far as pipes, as far as side roads, not just Kickapoo or 45th or Harrison or MacArthur, expansion on that, but side roads neighborhoods where you drive through and it's not that people don't mind going slow they couldn't go over 15 miles an hour even if they wanted to because you're either going to tear your car up or it's i mean depending on the weather it may just throw you into the curb just because of the size of the potholes and i think there's a lot of things that we need to fix before we jump to yet another large project in this town we need to take care of the smaller things that we could do pretty easily, really. And yes, the city may have to bite the bullet and fit the bill of a lot of that because it may not be covered under grants like what we got for some of, uh, I believe, Kickapoo and such like that. It may be a little bit more money from the Shawnee, but I'd like to work and see if we can afford to do that and find a way to do that so that people can drive in their neighborhoods and have nice streets to drive on. That's another way to bring people into this town too, not just a brand new neighborhood but an older neighborhood where maybe somebody buys their first house and they want to rebuild it. But they don't because the road's terrible. And that's the only reason they didn't come. So. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, 
are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they may be somewhat difficult? And uh, please explain. Absolutely. Uh, I came up here and spoke when uh, bike lanes was still an issue. And I spoke vehemently, vehemently against it. And I know that there was people that were for it. It's fine. It's their decision. I was against it. And it didn't matter one way or the other to me. I was against it because, like I said previously, with the infrastructure, we had plenty of other things to spend money on than that. Uh, uh, if we want to talk about the mask issue, you know, I respect Mr. Salter completely. He's very much for masks. I am not unless it's required by a business. I'm opposed to masks. However, that's fine. I still don't mind making the decision that I think is best for Shawnee, even if the two of us disagree. Not an issue. Okay, very good. And speaking of uh, Commissioner Salter, I think he has a question. Well, I think working at Tinker, uh, you're used to reading regulations and how to make a plane fly. And uh, so would you be willing to continue to do all of the reading for the city council if you were selected? Absolutely, and over the past seven months of coming up here and speaking at the city commission meetings and being willing, to, being willing to call out specific articles in city code myself, specific articles of the contracts the city assigned, uh, Spectral was one with the Expo Center, I read all that myself. I read every page of that, and some of it was pretty, pretty lengthy. So, yeah, I've already read all that, and I'm not even sitting on the commission. Good. You got some now, I've never known you as Robert. You've always been Rob. So you, you <laughs> throw me there. but um, Well, and the special people get Robbie, but <laughs> we, won't, we won't go to that one. <laughs> I, I just want to say I, I know and I applaud you for your involvement in the city. You've been at these city commission meetings long before I was on the commission. And I know that you've read, you've talked to me about some issues before I even thought about being on the commission. But I do applaud you for being a citizen that's actively involved comes to these meetings, listens, and shares your opinion. And I think that's real helpful for us to have. So I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Anybody got anything else? I guess you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Right. Appreciate it. Okay, so now I have a question. Are we gonna show the video or are we gonna, no? We didn't receive one. We did not receive one. So we'll skip over Mr. O'Neill. So that gets us to Mr. Palmer sitting right up front. Make the short walk. Well, how is everyone tonight? Good. How are you doing, Steve? I want to congratulate Ward 1. I mean, this is awesome. It is. We've had a good representation, mm -hmm. making your job hard on deciding, because uh, obviously there's a lot of qualified people. Uh, I'm Steve Palmer. Uh, thank you for taking the time tonight to listen to all of us. And we are here. I'm here because, like everyone else, we love Shawnee. We want to be involved, and I think that's probably the, the main reason that I am up here, because I want to be engaged in the process. And I know there is a process to seeing Shawnee become everything that we can be as a community. So I, I uh, have lived here since 95. I married a Shawnee girl. Um, she's a school teacher at, a, at uh, Liberty Academy here in town. I am a nonprofit director. Uh, Neighboring 101 is the name of the nonprofit. And we work essentially with people that struggle in poverty, try and help people move forward. So I, uh, I guess I would ask myself the question in the three-minute time slot I have here. Of how is Shawnee doing, as we heard earlier, how are we doing on a scale of 1 to 10? And I would like to honestly look at that as a commissioner and say, what can we do as a community to increase that rating? So... The other thing that comes to me is the heart. I'm, I'm very focused on the heart of our community, which is obviously the people. 
How are our, how's our heart doing? How, how are we doing? Is it a, do we have a healthy heart in Shawnee? Are the people maximizing who they can be in this town? So those are some things I would really be interested in and looking at as a, as a city commissioner. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, go through your questions here. Um, how do you believe your experience will best serve the city of Shawnee as a commissioner? Well, uh, again, being in non nonprofit work, I have the joy and the pleasure of working with a, a board of directors that volunteer their time, like each one of you do. And one of the main, um, there's two main things there that I focus on, I think, that would apply to this uh, being a commissioner. Number one, being a part of a team. And that's what we are, that's what you, you guys are, that's what everybody here is. You're a part of a team, and everybody is crucially important. So that would be one. The other one would be, again, would be engage, being engaged. Being engaged with one another, being engaged with the process, and being engaged with the people in the community. So that would be two of the things that I am actively involved in in my work. So that would translate to this situation very well. Okay, very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. How would you deal with citizen conflict and resolution? I would, number one, I would listen. And number two, I would put myself in whoever I'm talking to and whatever group I'm talking to, I would try and put myself in their shoes. See where they're coming from when they are coming, when we're talking about a situation where we probably don't agree on. So I want to put myself in their situation, in their shoes. Number three, I want to feel like, I want, I want them to feel like, I want that group or that person to feel like that they have a voice, that they're being heard. I, th I think that's a real problem. I don't think people feel like they're being heard. And then number four, I would work with them and give them an opportunity as, as partnering with them as a community member. Again, going back to that heart, going back to where are we as a heart, as a people, as a community, I would work with them on some strategies to deal with the conflict that, that we're experiencing. So. Alrighty, thank you, sir. What do you believe are the three greatest strengths of Shawnee? Well, I think the greatest strength of our community is our history. We, when I was in leadership Shawnee, I learned about our history. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed to, to learn that we, we became a, a, a city in the late 1800s. We were a metropolis of, of a very large, almost equally very similar to the population we have currently. And there was a train coming in and out of Shawnee every 10 minutes. And we were up for consideration for the state capital. So I think our history is our greatest strength. I think our, the diversity of people in our community is our second greatest strength because we have a tremendous base of ethnicity from which to draw from in our community. And I really think we need to maximize that. And then I think our third greatest strength is, is, our, is uh, OBU. I, I think we have such an untapped wealth of opportunity and potential in OBU. So that would, I think those would be our three greatest strengths. Okay, very good, thank you. Does your interest in serving on the city commission stem from a personal interest or goal? Is there something in particular you hope to accomplish while serving on the city commission? 
and why is serving on the commission important to you? Well, it's important to me because I, I really believe that this group is so important because it represents the leadership of our community. And leaders, uh, an organization, a group will only go as far as their leader takes them, as their leadership takes them. So I think being a part of this group gives me the opportunity to be a part of that leadership, but also connect with the community. And yes, as far as a personal uh, goal, as far as a personal agenda, again, it's, it's about connecting with the people in the community. That is, to me, that is so critically important. Okay, very good, thank you, sir. Uh, let's see, if you could make any improvement to the city of Shawnee, what would that improvement be? Well, I, th I think that again, um, the improvement would be really twofold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna label it relational and logistical. So in our relational improvements, I think we could do a better job connecting with one another because like I said earlier, we have an immense diversity and, and uh, of people in our community. And I think we could do a better job of connecting with one another. Number two, logistically, I think we have um, a number of properties, a number of areas in our community that are not being utilized, that are not being maximized. I think we have some things going on in our community that could really be developed and create situations in our community that could really be beneficial for a lot of people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public even though they are somewhat difficult and please explain. Yeah, I, I think this is a great question because it's during those times of struggle, those times of difficult decisions that we really, first of all, we get to know one another Secondly, we, we get to see one another's strengths or weaknesses. If we're working on things together, then we get to spend time with each other in, in, in times that really matter. So we can really begin to see, have an opportunity to, in doing that, in working those things out, we can really begin to connect with one another, but we can also work together to solve those problems, so I welcome, and I, I think it's a great opportunity to be involved in those difficult decisions and those difficult times as we work together. Okay, very good, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Salter. You've heard the question with the previous <laughs> six applicants. Are you willing to put forth the effort to do all of the reading necessary for the commission meetings. I am, Mr. Salter, and I appreciate you asking the question because I, you know, it's going to be in, in, in the process of being involved on the commission. I think it's important that we do take that seriously and that we not only read it, but we write down notes, we, we understand what we're, you know, because I see a lot of votes you know, with no negative, you know, no, nobody saying no to the vote, which is fine. But if I, if I take the time to read something and ask questions on it and really understand what I'm voting on and understand the agenda, then that's going to take time. And I appreciate that, that question. Very good. Anybody, anything else, you guys? Thank you all very much. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so I believe that's our last. 
person or Lindy. is is she going to okay go. come on up Lindy thank you very much glad you caught me on that Hello, Commissioner how are you mayor how are you today so the last time I spoke into this microphone it was 25 years ago and I was a Nikaho delegate to Japan <laughs> <laughs> Um, so with that, I have a heavy heart. I regret to inform you um, that due to an oversight with the Shawnee Forward um, Employee Handbook, my executive board has ruled that I am ineligible. Um, so therefore, I will withdraw my candidacy for city commission. Um, but I thank you for the consideration and would have been honored to serve next to you had I been chosen. Um, to the new commissioner and all the current commissioners and mayor, um, you will have my continued support um as a ward one household and as a proud shawnee citizen good thank you thank you lindy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so i believe we've gotten everybody's input that we oh i thought you were what, next question okay so my understanding is we can we can handle this a number of ways i mean we could actually move to Point someone tonight we could move to put it off till next meeting I mean we have time legally to, to do that if we wanted to digest all this information or if somebody wants to make a motion yes okay I've got so many papers up here now I, I'm sorry let me get to uh, Fifteen. I stole Travis's here. Okay. So discussion, consideration, possible action to appoint a city commissioner to Ward One position to fill the open position left by appointment of Ed Bolt as mayor to complete remainder of term expiring 2022. So we've we've uh, I guess now it's time to. Uh, time to discuss Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion but I'd like to make a comment during the discussion after we've after we've um, made the motion have a second but I'd make a motion that we approve uh, Rex Hennon as the candidate for uh, Ward 1 City Commission okay we have a we have a motion well, I'll second it okay so now we have a we have a discussion uh, yes, I, I'd like to start the discussion since that's appropriate. First of all, I want to say, in all honesty, I could say every applicant that's spoken to us tonight would be a great addition to the commission, and I applaud each and every one of you for doing it. I have been through this <clears throat> process, and I don't like it. I was appointed to fill the vacancy on the commission, and I've been on the commission when we filled an appointment before, and this is not a fair process for any of you. It's the best we've got because it's not an election. It's not the public having the opportunity to hear all of your viewpoints. It's, it's the five of us tonight. There's not the six member is not here, so there's five of us. Um, every one of you, and I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, <coughs> brings something to the table that would be unique and be very helpful to us as a commission. So it pains me to have to specifically vote for one individual, but that's the way that this, this, this process works. Therefore, I, I truly believe that the person I have uh, nominated to be to fill that vacancy would be the best to serve on our commission so wanted to say that during our discussion and I appreciate that mr. mayor any other discussion you know, I don't really know any of the individuals and all of them bring a ton to the table but on this short of notice with lack of research I'm kind of on the fence on that Anybody else got anything? If not, I'll. Add the way on. this is written, it is to complete the remainder of term expiring 2022. Right. Is that our only option in the way this is written, or do we have more options available to us? No, there's more options, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, the the ordinance specifically allows for the calling of a special election to fill the seat. So at that point, you would just be filling a seat until the next special election if that was the choice of the commission. Um, the ordinance, though, specifically does not require the calling of a special election, which is, uh, again, I, my legislative intent there would 
I would argue would be going towards the cost effectiveness of multiple special elections. But th that is an option that the commission has. So if I, just to make sure I'm clear on that, it, it would be we would uh, appoint someone and then rather than being to what was the expiration of my term in Ward 1, it would then be to the next special election, which obviously can't happen for a couple months anyway, anyway but probably January, November or January, I January would be the next January so, would be so the So really next. just for simplicity for the discussion, I, I really see there being three options. Right. Option one being um, to appoint for the remainder of the term, which is allowed under sure. the charter. Option two would be to appoint until a special election could be called, which would not be earlier than January. And then option three would be to leave the seat vacant and call for a special election, which would be in January. Why the delay until January on the special election? Just timing with the election board at this point. So it can't be piggybacked on to a, a, I guess you, if it was possible, you would have laid that option out, but to, to piggyback on an already existing election like November. Like November, right. yeah. It was too late, right? Yes, I didn't. It's too late. It's too late for nothing. So many days that we have to get a resolution okay. to the election board, and there's not enough time for the November election. Okay, and Mr. Mayor. And, and what yes, would sir. be the cost of that election? It depends. Well, and I don't. If, if we pick it at probably two or three thousand, if yeah. we're on our own, upwards of ten thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I thought yeah. piggybacking was. Two thousand or two or three thousand if we can pay for that. Okay. Okay. So we've got basically three options then. So we we could choose someone to serve to the special election. We could leave it vacant, which I would hate to see us leave a seat vacant. Or and, and that was my motion, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Absolutely. We, we have a, a motion that we have to consider. So. Um, was to appoint someone. That's yeah. correct. Yes, sir. And we're going to, so we're going to appoint them for the duration of the. But that was that the way that was written would be for the duration. That's that's what the motion currently is before us. That, that was my understanding of Commissioner Weaver's motion. So it would, okay. it would take a friendly amendment to be accepted at this point um, <coughs> to change that. Or for it to be voted down and a new motion to be yeah. made. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? The, the only other thing that I'd say at this point as far as discussion goes is I'm very impressed with all the folks that we heard from today and I mean everybody kept saying that people are the, the you know the best thing here in Shawnee and I, I think that just reinforces what we uh, what we already knew was uh, the quality of the folks that great to see this many people yeah it's great to see this many people and and we we saw a lot of really good people too so I mean it just reinforces what we heard from everybody tonight so any more discussion we will call the question so the question right now is uh, mr. Hennon to sort the of the, of the, the remainder of what was my term then okay so we'll call the question So question fails three to two. So that gets us to the point where we could have another uh, motion or? I'm going to look at it and kind of get time to look. I mean, this may be my choice, mm -hmm. but I need more time to make an educated decision. So I, I move to take some time and move it till the next commission meeting then we'll vote on it then so the motion would be to the next commission meeting then so which would be the 17th 17th so if we defer to the next meeting same group same applicants that we have would be what we're going to vote on at that point yeah. Or we or we can opt to have a special election. Correct. So I mean, so, I mean it's, it's wide open. All those options are still on the, still on the table, table at that point. Yeah. We don't have to agree to any of them. 
or we could do just fill the vacancy and then still have a special election in January. Yes. If we want to spend ten thousand dollars to do that, and I think what that opens up for us, commissioners, is that it's going to give two weeks for lobbying for by these individuals and supporters of these individuals, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No. But prepare for it because yeah. the process allowed us where we could make that decision. We had the applications where we had time to study them, and we had the opportunity to ask questions of each individual mm -hmm. and hear their comments. So. Mm -hmm. I think we've had adequate information for being able to make the decision, but if it's the will of the commission to postpone it, um, just know those are consequences we're going to deal with. And there is a motion to declare the item until the 817 meeting, but there is not a second. Okay. I'll, I'll second to defer. Okay, so we have a motion and a second then, so we will call that question. Unless there's further discussion. Unless there's further discussion. Seeing none, then we'll call the question. Now let's see. That motion passes three to two. So then we will we will take this uh, question up on the on the seventeenth. Then, okay. Well, look. And, I, and Bob, I think you're right. I think we will get a lot of a lobbying. We we already have. So let's see. So 16. Joe, what do we do with that now that we didn't? So that was a, just a if necessary type. So then we just we just stand adjourned at this point. Correct. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So okay. That's all I see on. The, no um, action on. Agenda no action 15. on. No action necessary on 16. So we should be adjourned.